Hey what's up you guys, it's Spartan and welcome to Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. So for this video I will be teaching you guys the best tactics and exploits in order to defend any castle or city. So for this battle we have 1000 heavily armored Azurai soldiers with 4 catapults, 2 siege towers and a ram. So this is the worst possible situation and they are also facing a tier 1 castle which is one of the worst in this entire game and only has 100 Batanian defenders. So in any normal situation this would lead to a complete defeat and your entire army would be slaughtered on the field. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to best defend your castle or your city from an overwhelming force of soldiers. So the first thing you're going to do is get rid of every single unneeded group of infantry and archer units. And then you're going to form three archer divisions. So we have three archer divisions and one infantry division. I'm going to put my infantry division at the gate. I'm going to put my main group of archers at least 40 yards away from the gates like this. Put them in a shield wall and I'm going to drag them as much as I possibly can. And I'm going to take about 20% for my left flank and 20% for my right flank. Now, I believe in this situation, I don't have enough room on this side, so you do need about 20 to 30 yards on the right and left flank in order for your archers to be safe, and I'll explain that later. We also have four onagers, which are going to focus fire on their ram first, and hopefully we can destroy it before it reaches us. But let's go ahead and check out this army before we do anything. It does look like we're getting a lot of nice fire on their ram, which is really nice to see. And if, if you really want to, you can take control of your onagers, but they should always be able to take out their rams. We got tons of archers also, but their archers can't see anything. They do have like 200 to 300 archers since their army's so large. But since we took all of our archers off the wall, we will not lose any of our infantry or archers skirmishing them down. But look at this, man. The Azurite archers, they're definitely pretty scary and intimidating. And this is what we really have to worry about, their infantry. So they have heavy shock infantry as well as some really, really heavy shield infantry. Okay, so we have destroyed the ram. So if we didn't destroy the ram, we could always uh, sally out with our infantry and destroy it by hand. But I am glad we didn't have to do that. So they are pushing up their siege towers and now we are ready to enact our siege defense tactic. All right, so the first thing you want to do after destroying their ram is take your infantry and open the first gate so you're going to open the inner gate and leave the outer gate closed and you're going to put them in a tight shield wall and make sure they're holding fire so that they can hold the nicest shield wall possible so we're just putting a lot of men in the middle of this gate protected from any archers or trebuchets and also make sure to put your hero right next to the outer gate because that is extremely important for later all right so here are the infantry so the infantry are entering through the walls and you'll notice something weird. They're not running after our men that are right next to them shooting their trebuchets at their own soldiers. So that is the first thing that you'll notice. They will completely ignore everything that is farther than five to 10 meters away from them. And they will run straight in a path, like a beeline straight for our gate. So if you have one inner gate open, they will make a beeline straight to your gate, which is really funny to see. But they will most likely make it to our gate, which is why we have this giant shield wall that will slow down their progress. And you also notice they'll just run straight into the shield wall without defending themselves. So, well, if they don't get shot down first. So they'll run straight into her gate without mostly defending themselves. And as soon as they get inside here, they will just run straight to try to open this gate, which is what we're going to stop them from doing. And while they're doing that, they're getting shot and pelt down from the back without actually paying any attention to our archers. So if you had the inner gate actually closed, they would run straight to your archers and straight to your catapult crew. So make sure you have that gate open. And look at this. Oh, they're still confused on this side. They're still getting pelted down on this side. Poor dudes. <laughs> they still don't know what to do yet. But it looks like they are doing some serious work to our infantry over here. And they're starting to get through. Or at least they're getting close to getting through. So I'm going to go ahead and use my second strategy here. All right, so the second part is if they're pushing through your infantry and you're starting to lose too many men, which we're really not but I'll do it anyways, you'll go ahead and just open the gate for them. Which is, sounds really weird, but as soon as you open the gate, you're going to let their commander in. Come on, commander. And then you're going to close this gate. All right, there we go. So we, t we stole their commander, we killed their commander, which breaks their morale, and they're going to get really confused and start running in back and forth. So there you go. So as soon as you open the gate, they ran back to their siege tower, 
to regroup and then they came back to the gate so it kind of reset them all right it does look like my archers over here were a little too close so i'll back them up a little bit so just make sure they're at least like 20 30 yards away i'd say like as far back as you can get honestly so i'll move these guys even farther back so they confuse them even more Oh, there you go. So they're still getting really confused over here. You can see them just running in circles. That really helps slow them down. So we got some reinforcements coming. And so far, we've killed about 300 soldiers. But they have a lot more soldiers coming. And they have an army of over 1,000. And this exploit will work for any size army. So it could be 2,000, 3,000. It doesn't really matter. So we got the second major push. And this is lower tier infantry is their reserve forces so we don't really have to worry about them quite as much your enemy will always send in their tier 5 units first so that's always the wave you have to worry about let's go ahead and show you guys an example of what actually happens so we'll go ahead open this gate and then show you guys exactly what their troops start to do so the second you open the gate they start turning around to regroup outside so they start running to the siege tower and they plan on basically gathering outside of the gate so that they can charge in so that is what we're doing right here so we're basically making them run back and forth by opening and closing the gate over and over but you do have to watch out their infantry will start charging your archers over here which is really scary to see so every time i open that gate they will go for my archers so let's go ahead and close the gate before their archers get in here and reset their archers because their archers also will charge through the gate and i don't think we could survive that all these poor tier one and tier two soldiers that have no morale are breaking from the battlefield so it looks like a couple hundred retreated i might be wrong but usually it's around 200 to 500 like half their army will retreat from using this tactic so it looks like the majority of the casualties were at the gate and then they made a beeline straight to the gate and sometimes they would charge your archers over here oh they're still stuck oh man i feel so bad all right let's go ahead and just finish them off real quick i feel bad for the man take them down and there we go that is the last of the hazard i actually oh my gosh oh one was about to escape but he got shot in the ass poor dude he actually got thrown on top of the ramp so he could actually try to escape but there you go we have executed the last of our prisoners from the azurai all right so the battle results say that we killed 547 of the azurai and 238 ran away so that means over 250 soldiers didn't even make it to the battlefield before they retreated Oh, it does look like, look, a Britannian Fiend Champions got 469 kills. That's awesome to see. They actually got almost 10 kills per Britannian Fiend. So if they didn't have any trebuchets, we would not have lost a single soldier. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys end up using this exploit for yourself, let me know how it goes for you guys down in the comments below. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, Spartans.